praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. I think, uh, I kept thinking it was six hour journey. It's like, I'm not much of a travel man, but I think that you're going to go further than what you have imagined. And you're going to get more out of your discipleship than your classroom settings. Although you're going to have a lot of information out of your classroom settings, I think things are going to begin to happen out of your discipleship. Amen. And, uh, yeah, you're going to go further out than what your family expected. That is for sure. How many know that God can launch us out further? Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It's an interesting thing because sometimes God will take someone in your family and they will, be, they will go out further than anyone else for a reason. Oftentimes, the least expected in the family. I, uh, I want to thank everyone for staying last Sunday for the Luau uh, meeting. Um, really excited about it. And I encourage everyone to, to uh, be with us in our next meeting. Amen. Because we have the privilege to, to, to minister to our community. It's an event that ministers to our community. It's not an event to minister to ourselves. Amen. And it's, it's not so much, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's not so much uh, what we're, you know, I think it goes both ways. I think that, uh, that God is looking at how he can provide for us, but it also it's a means of how we can touch the community. I think that's really important to the Lord. So, Every one of you participate makes a huge difference. How many want to make a difference in the community? Amen. That's what it's all about. Amen. Praise God. I, uh, I guess in the next 20 minutes or so, I want to share with you, this is part two on the renewing of the mind, uh, keys to changing our behavior, Romans chapter 12, verse 2. And uh, we'll just go through with... Uh, time that we have left here amen romans 12 verse 2 says do not be conformed to the pattern of this world but be transformed but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you will be able to test approve what god's will is his good pleasing and perfect will and that's the niv version let's pray father in jesus name open our hearts to receive your word this morning father i pray that you would uh Expand our understanding and give us clarity of your will this morning as you deposit your grace into our hearts and our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. So we're talking about uh, keys to changing our behavior. I think one of the most difficult things in life is, is just changing your behavior. You know, I encounter a lot of people who say, man, how do you change your behavior? Or how do you, you know, it's just a hard thing. I try to do this or try to do that, or, you know. Somebody took mentioning about diets and stuff. It's hard to change and your, your behavioral patterns when it comes to eating and all. It's just overall a hard thing to do. But our behavior is produced by thought patterns planted like seeds from birth. They come from our home environment and from daily encounters with people and situations. They also come from, uh, they also are passed down amen, from one generation to the next. So good patterns, negative patterns, shape our mind for the good or for the bad. I want to share this definition with you. Uh, it's one of the definitions that, that I read, and it was very powerful. And it reads like this. This is the, uh, one of the definitions that I, I read on pattern, the word pattern. The brain not only receives information, but interprets and patterns it. Let me read it one more time. The brain not only receives information, but interprets and patterns it. So from our birth, we receive information from others, and our brain patterns it. Information comes in the form of words, deeds, from people that are part of our lives. Can you imagine, parents, 
every word, every deed we demonstrate is received as information, processed, and then our little brains pattern it. Patterns it. Hardwires in our brain. It, it takes it, processes it, and then patterns it. Everything we say, everything we do, every act, every behavior, every attitude, every action is processed in the brain, and then it's patterned. Amen? That's how important it is, not only as parents, but how important on what we say, how we act on a daily basis. Because everything is processed and patterned. Our brain was designed by God to take information and pattern it. Amen? When God speaks his word, it comes in, we process it, and it is patterned. This tells us how important parenting is in the home environment. Every word, every behavior, every action that is planted years later will manifest in a person's life. Every seed we sow will grow an attitude. Every seed we sow grows a behavior. You know, one of the powerful lessons that I've learned from the Holy Spirit in parenting as a, as a father uh, I remember one day God stepped in, and I was ready to, I don't know, I forget what I was, I was about to say something, and, and, and the Lord said, shh, and silenced me. I said, what? You know, because the Lord, the Lord said, listen, you're going to sow. No matter how much you yell and shout, you're not going to sow by getting upset and getting mad. You're going to sow by good example. Behave right because they're going to process that and pattern it in their little brains. And what you sow, one day you're going to see manifest in your child's life. It could be a bad tree. It could be a good tree. You know, when we see our kids grow up and we see them and we see their patterns, And we know where it came from. We know where it came from. So, you may say, well, I won't do nothing, but doing nothing is a pattern. I know people that don't do nothing at all about anything. It's a pattern. They process the information and patterned it. Every negative action you demonstrate in home even on a daily basis, is being processed. It becomes a pattern. What kind of spirit you want your children to have, what kind of attitude you want your children to possess, what kind of behavior you want your children to have in the future, all depends on the seeds we are sowing today. And if we are not protecting them, then others will sow seeds into the mix. And that's one of the struggles and one of the problems that we are facing today because of the life that we've made it, because of what the world is today. And we made the world the way it is today, by the way. We have, we're so busy that parents are literally absent from their children. So wherever you planted them, wherever you sow them, whether it's in the life of another hand, or in daycare, nursery care, home care, uncle, auntie, whatever it is, Someone else is sowing in the mix. Someone else is sowing in the mix. So don't get upset when your children grow up and manifest harvest time when you were not there, when you were absent, because they're being pandered somewhere else. Why am I sharing with this? Because it's so important that we understand how generations work. Because the future, the future generation is important. How many believe that? Every generation is important. 
Are we producing generations that fail? That's a huge problem for our nation. Huge problem, listen, for your family line, my family line. Family lines is a big deal in the Bible. When there was a sinful situation in the family line, they would beg and say, please do not cut off my name from my family line. That's how bad it is. So we need to consider how important this is. Every time you speak, you're releasing information. Every action you take, okay? And I said this, I think, Thursday evening in our prayer service, that if you, if you correct like a madman, that is processed information and pattern. And so the way they learn how to solve their problems when they grow up is to become a madman. Because that's what they processed, and that is exactly what they pattern. You know, I look at people who are always yelling, and, or the voice always yells, or gets high, or they get really, whatever it is, defensive, or whatever it is, and they just really, you ever seen anybody like that? They just kind of, like, you know, go over. And then you meet their family, and you really say, oh, that's why the person is like that. Because it's patterned after generation after generation. God instructed Moses, when you build a temple, make sure you pattern it after the heavenly blueprint. Pattern. City of Jerusalem, make sure it's patterned after the heavenly blueprint. And so I'm saying this because we have to be more careful of what we're saying. And it's not only with children, it's about with each other, Right? Every time we communicate each other, we're giving each other information. And we're going to process that information. And it's going to be hardwired. It's going to be patterned. Our hurts, the way we hurt each other, is patterned. And it will destroy your soul and it will limit your growth. Attitude. Of course, we don't have no attitude here. Because Ezekiel 37 is righteous. No, I'm just joking. We all get an attitude every once in a while. Somebody say amen. amen. Yes, I have attitudes. Amen. I, I mean, if I could raise my two feet, I would, but I'll probably fall. We all have attitudes. We're working on it. God's working on us. We're not there, but we're, we're getting there. You sow an attitude. It will manifest someday. The same attitude you have against your wife, the same attitude you have against your neighbor, your children sees it, processes it, they'll have the same attitude towards their husband later on. They will have the same attitude towards their wives later on. Because a seed was planted and it will grow. Somebody say amen. amen. I know this is not a shouting sermon. But, you know, I find that sometimes God has us, like, excited, moving, and sometimes he says, sit down so I can teach you and instruct you and disciple you. So this time, just sit and listen. I was listening to this guy who was a motivational speaker. He says that we watch, but we, we're, we're, we attend, but we don't listen. Did you know we can be professional attenders we can attend every week, but not listen. We can watch television, but not really seeing. You know what I mean? But I think that it's time for us to sit down, relax, be still, and just listen to the instructions of the Lord. Amen? Hallelujah. Scripture is clear. Be not conformed to this world. We do not follow the crowd. We do not follow the spirit of this world. We do not raise our children in the same manner the world does. We do not pattern after the world's belief system or value system and even the educated system. There are many things our young people are being taught in school that do not line up with our biblical values. So guess what? When your child gets, comes home, you have to check them out. But you know what we do? 
We don't, you know what parents do today? We don't care where they come from. We don't check in. We don't check their hearts. We don't check their mind. We don't check their soul. We don't check their spiritual condition. We don't check their life. Because everybody's too busy with their own lives. We're all busy with our own lives. We don't check in. We all live under one roof, but we all have different lives. We're not checking in. But I believe that it's, uh, it starts from the top. Whoever comes in, how are you doing? All right, check in a little bit. It's okay. You know, sometimes me and my wife, we have to check in. How are you doing? How was work? How are you doing? You got to check in every once in a while. Because if you don't, the world will educate your child and pattern them after the world. But we know it's clear that we're not to be conformed to the world. We all come to this world with established patterns passed down to us. Not only passed down, but our experience from birth. As we're growing, many things are added to us. So here's the deal. I've said this before. It's worth saying again. Negative patterns do not automatically break off. We're under their control. They don't just fall off. Okay? These are hardwired patterns. They're well established through repetition. Okay? Now, excuse my language for a moment, okay? I'm not going to cuss. But excuse my language for a moment. But in, in a home environment, if you're telling your child, telling your wife, husband, brother, sister, whatever, if you continue to say, shut up, shut up, and you do it every single day, you establish a pattern. The first thing that will come out of that person's mouth, when somebody says something, shut up. I like the other thing where I talk to the hand. I mean, here everything. Talk to the hand. So after a while, it's patterned. Leave the home, wherever you're going. You get mad, get somebody upset at somebody. Talk to the hand. And like I said before, we pick up bad habits before we take pick up good ones. Listen, it's 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 a. Uh, you know. I had a hard time with this, and I had to work my way through. Because you know what? We don't like no one telling us what to do. And you know what? God is not telling us what to do. There's a difference between Holy Ghost instruction and someone telling you what to do. In this life, we grow up. No one's going to tell me what to do. The attitude, right? Anybody relate to that? No one? You guys are not humans? I hope you're not aliens. Right? No one's going to tell me what to do, man. What? Hey, you can't say that to me. And we, ha- we just have this terrible attitude that we sow everywhere we go. It spreads like a disease. You go to work. You try to say something nice. You're just trying to be good. Don't tell me what to do. I'm not telling you what to do. What? You want something? Oh, crazy world that we live in. You know what I'm saying? It's patterned. But what we need to receive this morning is that God's not telling us what to do. He's instructing us. He's discipling us. He's teaching us his word. I understand the truth hurts, but the end heals and makes you well. So just receive truth. Right? Make a decision in your heart that whenever God speaks truth into your life, you're going to receive it. I'll be honest with you. Sometimes it doesn't always come nicely. Sometimes it comes in a negative situation. But you learn. You learn to pick out what God is saying in a negative situation, bad situation, not fair. But in it, there's a little, like a little light. And you can pick up what God is saying to you. And that's how we learn. So we don't get upset when we're in a circumstance that it's not fair. It's just not fair. Right? I want vanilla ice cream, you give me Rocky Road. That's not my flavor. 
You get mad at the person who gives you the ice cream, the wrong ice cream. All right. They don't fade away with time. We can be Christians for years and still have those patterns rule over us. God sets us free supernaturally, but we also have our part to do. And we are to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. God, listen, God works with obedience. There is no other way. He works with obedience. As we obey him, cooperate with him, God does the supernatural work in us. And through he begins to do things that we can't do for ourselves. See, I know I can't break these patterns. I know that I can't break these bad behavior habits and, and these negative things. I, I know I can't do it myself. But I know that each time I step in obedience to the Lord and cooperate with what he's doing, I know they will break off of me. Because if I obey, God does the supernatural thing. And believe me, you, me, us would need supernatural. For natural help, because our best efforts will fall short. How many know that your best efforts will not get you into heaven? How many know you need supernatural help? Amen? So here's the problem. We're unable to discern the will of God. The only way we can properly discern the will of God is by a transformed mind. Everybody say transformed mind. How do we get a transformed mind? We must take our mind through the process of being renewed. The process of being renewed. And and listen, coming to service and coming to to hearing the word is all part of the process. But there's, there's things that we got to do still that goes beyond that. We remove negative thought patterns by replacing them with new ones. We fill our minds with thoughts that produce Christ-like behavior. So my question to you this morning is, does your attitude reflect Christ? Does your action or words reflect Christ in you? We might say that this is too much work, Pastor, too much time to renew your mind. It's way, I mean, you know what? That's just too much. Is following Jesus worth the investment? Somebody raise your hand. Somebody raise your hand. Is it worth following Jesus? Is it worth the investment in establishing new patterns in your life? Because I'm going to tell you right now, you got new life here, but your mind has nothing to do with it. It it doesn't want that life. So when we get saved, we got to do something with this. That's why God says, you want to be transformed? then this is what you got to do. Paul said it just straightforward. Be transformed in the renewing of your mind. Amen. The good news is this. We don't have to figure out where to start or what to start on. Because, amen, the Holy Spirit will do all the leading. All the leading. Just follow his lead. Holy Spirit will lead us into the process of transformation. He's... He's the boss. He's the one that leads you into transformation. We don't do the leading. Okay? Because we don't know how it works, how it starts, nor do we have the wisdom or the power to change ourselves. We've got to have somebody higher than us called Holy Ghost to lead us in the process of transformation. You can't just say a list of good things and this is the last the list of bad things. I'm just going to go over here and do the good things. Because transformation is much deeper than that. You're going to find that when you go to the list, trying to do good, every time you try to do good, you find yourself doing the bad. Even Paul knew that struggle. Every time I want to do good, I do bad. I don't want to cuss, I find myself cussing. I said, I'm never going to lie. I lied. You go at the job and you're a chef, you're trying to apply for a chef. You said, yeah, I learned how to cook, but you lied. You don't know how to cook. <laughs> We're not even aware of all these elements, all these things going on in our lives. Only God does. That's why he leads the process of transformation. We rest in that. We follow him. 
God has touched our hearts with new life. Our minds need to be renewed to further our transformation, to complete our transformation. Our minds, listen, will give us trouble if it remains the same. So we get to the altar, get saved, woohoo! New life is in you. All heaven celebrates. Everybody in your family celebrates. Because now they're thinking, man, yeah, man, his attitude changed. Woohoo! But sooner or later, this thing here, because it did not change and remain the same, we find ourselves stuck in the same pattern. It limits the spiritual growth. We have new life growing in us, so everything about us must line up with this new life that is springing up. Amen? Our thinking must change along with the new life rising within. Our thinking must change according to what God is doing on the inside of us. That's important for us to understand. Whatever he's doing here, my mind got to line up with it. Everything else, my actions, my attitude, you know, everything has to line up with what God is doing in here. See, God's trying to do something in you, but your mind often gets in the way. And you got to renew your mind. You got to renew your mind according to what he's doing in you. So that everything lines up so that your transformation, my transformation goes further and it's completed. Romans 8 verse 7, I'll read it really quickly. I know that we're running out of time, so we're going to come to a close. But the mind... Romans 8, verse 7, the mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. So in other words, your mind is an enemy of God. That's why he says, be transformed. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be transformed with the renewing of your mind because your mind opposes the will of God. It's hostile. All those patterns in there will limit us from growing and maturing, moving into the things of God. And I've said it before, I don't trust this thing between my ears. I'm glad that it's there, because if it was empty, I would be in trouble. But it needs to be renewed, because God gave me a brain. It just needs to be renewed, be be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And God knows that. The word conformed in the Greek, and I'm not going to pronounce it because I'm going to sound like I'm not from this world. I'll be speaking in tongues. Okay? But the word conform, okay, uh, is a is, is, uh, is the fashion of something, the form or fashion of something. But this compound word has two different meanings. Con means with, and form means pressure. So we are not to let the world shape us or form us into the image of itself. In other words, this verse could be read, don't let the world squeeze you into its own mold or image. And it's the prayer pressure that we experience when we step out into this world. This prayer pressure that you feel at work, at school, and daily living. The world pressures you. You know, you know, with the, uh, you know, with young girls today, young women today, they're so pressured because the world pressures them in thinking that you have to be beautiful this way to be accepted and to be valued. So they have to go to the store and get their makeup done. I said, you're only beautiful. I know, Dad, but I have to, okay? Nails have to be, I know, but I have to get them. (laughs) Do you have money? No, Dad, but I'm asking you, do you have money? (laughs) Oh, my goodness. There's nothing wrong with getting all those things done. But my point is this. The prayer pressure that we experience every day in this world. The prayer pressure that you experience at your work, at your company. The school that you go to. 
Even the peer pressure that we have in our own homes. Conforming to the world. We begin to look just like the world. Not like Christ. Not like the kingdom that we represent. People can't tell the difference. We have wrong attitudes. You call yourself a Christian, but you have an attitude for everything. You get upset about everything. You complain about everything. You look just like the world. We do. They can't tell the difference. The Greek word Paul uses for renewal, I'm not going to pronounce that. I mean, I looked at it and said, is that a Filipino word? Anak? Anaka? Anak? I was just, my brain was just. Anyways, to the Greeks, it means a complete renovation, as in one of their dwellings. So the renewing of our minds is God's spirit changing our mind completely in a different You know, when I was preparing this, some of us need to think differently about our problems. Some of us need to think differently about the situation. Some of us need to think differently to see things in a different light. A person that has been transformed can test whether something is biblical or not. And that really is the point of the verse. A transformed person can see and discern and know the difference. A person not transformed cannot tell. As the scripture says, so that you may test, improve, and know that what is pleasing, what is good, what is the will of God. And our problem is that we don't know how to discern the will of God. Because our mind has not been renewed and we're not in the place of transformation. So we have a hard time discerning. A person that's been transformed can test whether something is biblical or not, discern whether a teaching is holy and acceptable. The Spirit of God can reveal where there is truth and where there is error. A renewed mind makes it easier to identify the will of God. That's the answer. If you want to know how do you, how do you know the will of God, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. A renewed mind can pinpoint the will of God. That's the answer. No easy way. Absolutely. There is no shortcuts to this. You got to dive into the word, meditate in the word. You got to read your Bible. You got to come to services and feed your feed your mind with the word. You got to listen to to through the ear gate, the word of the Lord coming through. You know, one of the, one day the Lord said that the gates are down. I said, "What do you mean? The gates have fallen." Oh, what do you mean? The eye gates, the ear gates, where information comes through, has fallen. I want to establish again righteous gates. You know, we're processing all the wrong information, establishing wrong patterns in our lives. How many want to establish a righteousness at the gates? Righteousness at the gates. Righteousness at the gates. Oftentimes, it's because of what we're consuming in this world, the things that we're feasting on in this world. Thought patterns change when revelation breaks through and replace our negative thoughts with thoughts coming from the Lord. Revelation breaks down wrong thought patterns. The result of a renewed mind is transformation. Transformation that gives us the ability to discern correctly. It's in that order. All right? So, revelation comes breaks down the wrong thought patterns, all the strongholds. The result is a renewed mind that leads us into transformation and transformation and gives us the ability to discern the will of God. So in every conversation, 
in every situation with life because we are being transformed daily we can identify instantly in a conversation whether the will of God is involved with the conversation we could hear somebody preach on the platform and instantly know that what is preaching is the will of God or not whether the teaching is acceptable biblical or not we could discern a situation that comes our way. It looks like, hey, man, it looks like things are working my way. We could discern it, whether it's the will of God or not. Because, listen, not everything that opens up is the will of God for you. Not every door that opens to you is the will of God for you. When you step in this world, the world opens up a lot of things to you. It doesn't mean it's the will of God for you. So you have to be able to discern it. Is it the will of God for me to go there? Is it the will of God for me to be here? Is this the will of God for my family? Is this the will of God for my marriage? Is this the will of God for my children? Is this the will of God for my finances? Is this the will of God for what God, uh, 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 for my life? And we do that because we are being transformed by the renewing of our minds. And we don't have enough of that. Traditionally, in the church, in general, we only depend on the preaching on Sunday. That's part of the process. But it's the work you do every day. It's what you do every day with the Word of God. It's how you're walking out your life every day before God that counts. So let's stand to our feet.